Did y'all see that clip of J.R. Smith? You know, talking about Delhi? Delhi almost died guarding Steph Curry. <laughs> no, literally almost died. If you, we, we have footage of this man in an ice tub, like literally to his neck trying to guard this man. That's real. <laughs> the two clutchest basketball players on the face of planet Earth just had a duel for the ages, despite Steph getting blasted for now being 2 for 11 on shots to tie slash take the lead in the final seconds of playoff games. Even after missing the game-tying attempt, Steph had 10 points on 100% true shooting in the clutch and 13 points in the fourth quarter. But story of the night was first name De'Aaron, last name him, who outscored Steph in the final period with 15 of his 38 points when it mattered most and scored 9 points on 66% true shooting in the clutch. De'Aaron's explosive first step off the bounce at 200 miles an hour like Max Verstappen, mixed with his ability to change gears going downhill out of both pick and rolls and transition opportunities, is now on full display for the entire world to witness. From there, what makes Fox such an enigma is the craftiness of this man. Whether it's isolating to show off his blend of momentum crossovers and shifty hesitations before getting buckets from the mid-range, or his wherewithal to embrace and fend off the contact to create separation for nifty little runners in traffic, you can see this man has the entire package offensively. In addition to seeing that, when he's bailing out Sacktown at the back end of the shot clock by crossing over and stepping back for Stephen Curry-esque triples in the face of the game's best defender, you can also see this man's mid-range and shooting balance from beyond the perimeter. This time, he takes a dribble into the lane and crosses over for the midi in Draymond's grill, then he makes Wiggins pay for going under the screen after a big body from Sabonis by whipping out a moving cross between the legs and Hezzy before stopping swiftly for the deep-range bomb. Based off the mix of sauce and speedy quicks off the bounce he was displaying earlier in the game, on this closeout, Curry has to be wary of a drive from Fox and can't fully close out, making Fox unstoppable when he's hitting spot-ups from 25 feet like this one. Then it's De'Aaron's awareness to find trailing teammates for buckets after stopping on a dime and pulling off elusive pass fakes. After pivoting out of this double team, while hanging in mid-air, watch how he fakes the dump off to Len to bait Kaminga into the restricted area before finding his Kentucky brethren in Monk for the wide-open triple. For a dagger jam from Sabonis, De'Aaron's body language signals a swing pass back to Monk right here before he whips a bullet pass down the lane. Paired with his instinctively quick hands to strip attacking players clean on the other side of the court, and it's safe to say this man Fox is showing himself to be a bona fide superstar caliber talent, scariest part of the incredibly difficult looks Fox hit is that they not only came against the defending champions, but they came under extreme pressure when coach Mike Brown and the Kings needed buckets to stem the tide of a raging warrior attack. And it's nothing new for first name De'Aaron, last name him, as like a sprained ankle, he's proven throughout the entire 22-23 campaign to be nothing to play with. The 25-year-old former Kentucky Wildcat was second only behind Kyrie Irving for total points in the fourth quarter this season with 547 of them. More noteworthy, he led the league by a legitimate mile in total clutch points this season. The gap between the number one ranked Fox and the number two ranked DeRozan in clutch points was a bigger gap between the number two ranked DeRozan and the number 10 ranked Kyrie Irving. Suitably coming up big time, De'Aaron's 38 points, as you likely know, were the second most of all time in a playoff debut. 29 of those points came in the second half. The only player to score more in his playoff debut was Luka Doncic, who scored 42 in the bubble against the Clippers three years ago. The increased physicality and heart-walloping intensity of the postseason evidently didn't make a difference, and this man stepped up to the moment and then some. In terms of the series dynamic after Sacramento picked up their first playoff win in almost two decades, while the Warriors stayed poised, not showing a sense of panic in either their post-game interviews or body language following the L, I think it says a lot that Sacramento didn't show a lot of what they have in terms of offensive motion, yet creators like Fox, along with Malik Monk and Harrison Barnes, were still able to exploit the Warriors off the bounce out of basic pick and rolls, or what they like to run extremely often, dribble handoffs with Sabonis. 
Therefore, the Warriors won't have much to scout in terms of advanced playsets, and while I was planning on breaking down a lot of the fluid off-ball motion that Golden State was running if they took the W, Mike Brown didn't give much away himself in Game 1. In regards to that, Coach Brown spoke on why De'Aaron's performance was so crucial, saying, quote, You need guys like that on your side because they know everything that we're throwing at them. There's no secrets. You have to have guys on your team that can go make plays, and Foxy went and made plays tonight, end quote. Scariest part of it all if you're a Warriors fan, while it's of course not time to panic quite yet, is that the lack of advanced motion that Sacramento was running in Game 1 doesn't mean their offense is basic. Expect them to showcase a lot more of their pistol action and generally more advanced off-ball motion as this series progresses. Ultimately, the first playoff meeting between these NorCal rivals more than lived up to the hype, as I don't know about you, but for me personally, the fast-paced electricity and execution in their own ways from both teams made it one of the most entertaining games I've ever witnessed. Expect this to shape up to be one of the most heated, fast-paced, and fun-to-watch seven-game series matchups of all time. Looking forward to seeing how Steve Kerr and company can bounce back from this, Crazier things have happened to a team than coming back from an 0-2 hole, but against such a high-powered system that's been so damn consistent all year, that of course would be far from ideal for the Dubs. If you're a Kings fan, it definitely bodes well for you that this dramatic win came despite an extremely rare off night for DeMontis Sabonis. And maybe you don't see Malik Monk score 32 off the bench, or he and Fox combine for 70 like they did which is a decent point, but you almost certainly won't see Domas shoot under 30% from the field in Game 2 or for the rest of this series. Throughout 79 games for Sacramento in the 22-23 regular season, Sabonis didn't even shoot under 30% from the field once. To be fair, going up against the defensive phenoms up front of Draymond Green and Kevon Looney is far from a walk in the park as those two warrior bigs did a great job of making everything tough on Domas. But I think the biggest storyline we can take from that is how the Kings still pulled this one out, despite it being such a rough night for their second option. On the other hand, the Warriors made it a point of emphasis to force Sabonis into being the shooter and really keyed in on shutting him down. That said, Domas averaged 21.3 points over three games against the Warriors during the regular year, he shot 52.4% from the field in those three outings, going 22 of 42 from the field. On the season as a whole, Sabonis shot a career-high 61.5% from the field, making his third career All-Star game. His 29.4% clip against the Warriors in Game 1 was nearly 4 percentage points worse than any other game he had this year, so expect the Kings' best big to be a lot better. Then again, from a Warrior standpoint, while for the most part, Andrew Wiggins did a shockingly good job at finding his flow after being out for such a large portion of the year, we're talking about a completely different storyline if Wiggs just hits a couple shots down the stretch. Andrew did say post-game that he quote-unquote felt amazing on his final shot attempt from the corner that missed. Again, it was generally a solid performance from Wiggs that Warrior fans can't be too disappointed about. That said, it's under pressure potential daggers that Wiggins missed, which can be so tough to knock down after being off for such a long stretch. Overall for the Kings, it's post-game responses from De'Aaron like the one you saw to open up this video, which have allowed them to control the narrative early on in this series. Their composure for such a young group is impressive, the shot making of both Fox and Monk shocking based off the fact that it was their playoff debuts.